I usually use the time of like feeling stuck as a cinematographer to kind of recuperate, re-energize and seek new inspiration. Sometimes you just kind of have to let it go and also let the performances do the job. Don't get down on yourself for the lack of budget and the lack of being able to execute something the way you envision it. Hi, my name is James Klopko. I'm a director of photography based in Toronto, and uh, I've been working in the industry for about like 15 years, but I haven't really been keeping count. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and I mostly work in feature films, short films, uh, documentaries, and commercial. I guess I slowly built my like budding career as a cinematographer on short films, and uh, I met directors along the way, producers along the way, that we're all growing as well, because a lot of them are starting as short films with me. And so um, eventually when I started getting offers for feature films, like my first feature film, I kind of was just waiting for the right script and the right opportunity that we could actually achieve something good on a low budget. And uh, so that's kind of how it started. I was getting offers for features, but then of course you just want to make sure it's the right one and that you start on the right foot. Uh, so that's how I approached that. And then I finally broke into doing my first feature, which was you know, always exciting. If a newer cinematographer's goal is to get into like short films and feature films and more narrative work, um, I think it's just a matter of finding people in a community to work with uh, to make those films together. And no matter how low budget they start out as, and slowly building your experience, building your craft and making things look better and better with every project. Um, I don't know if getting a lot of commercial work is necessarily gonna help you get more short films and things, but of course, if your commercial work is you know, uh, of a good quality, it always helps that you, to show on your reel that you can expose an image this way, you can light an image this way. And uh, so I think it's like a bit of two prongs. It doesn't hurt to have the commercial work, but um, uh, definitely just growing with a community of filmmakers is, is how I did it. And that helped me a lot. Uh, so I can't say that the commercial work for me really helped all that much, except for maybe get a little, you know, keep you motivated and maybe use it as a refresher from other work. You know, it's nice to change styles and change it up every once in a while. When you're a younger cinematographer, you, you get fixated on the precision and the, te the technical aspects sometimes. And, um, you, you know, that, that light being slightly off during the take, you just want to run in and change it. Right. Um, you know, but as you grow as a cinematographer, you become, uh, more confident in your lighting. Uh, you make less of those l little mistakes, right? Or those mistakes when you're younger can turn out to be the way you actually like to light and you've changed your mind. There's so much growth as a cinematographer as you go along that what was a mistake one day is actually what you want to do on the next project. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's important when you're working at a certain scale, especially when there's actors, uh, like you're working with higher caliber actors, um, more money's at stake. Uh, you can't just interrupt the take and change a light. It's not, you have to let it live. And usually that little fixation that you have about the lighting that's a problem in that take, um, generally in the grand scheme of things is not the end of the world. You, the viewer won't really notice. And if anything, it's probably tweakable in the color grade a little bit. So it's, you can't, you know, live and die on these little mistakes. And, you know, if it's something that you really need to change and it's very quick to change, then change it in between takes and don't make a big deal out of it. But um, sometimes you just kind of have to let it go and also let the performances do the job uh, uh, for you. And, and, you know, it's not all about your lighting. It's not all about the little camera. Mis mishaps that might have happened. Uh, a lot of the times it's just about the performance and your, your lighting and your camera work is only supposed to like really enhance it. Uh, so you just kind of have to let it go sometimes. <laughs>
When it comes to maybe finding new directors and working with new directors, um, I can't say I've reached out exclusively to certain directors. Um, it's usually kind of a word of mouth thing where maybe there's a director that likes working with a certain cinematographer, but that cinematographer is not available anymore. And so that director goes, talks to another director, says, hey, how is it working with James, for example, like working? And then they say, yeah, I liked working with him. So then I'll get a call uh, uh, in an interview maybe, and just kind of start the conversation of like, should we collaborate together? Um, so generally I get to work with new directors out of word of mouth, whether it's from other directors or producers uh, or, or networking through like the, the agent platform. Um, but uh, I've never been good at uh, reaching out to new directors and, and um, I've never found that successful for me. And I think that's because it, for me, it's just not natural. I, I'm not, I'm a, quite a shy person and I, uh, you know, I don't like putting myself out there like that. And uh, it, it all feels unnatural. And I feel like most people can call you on it. <laughs> so I just don't do it anymore unless it's like a director where I'm like, I need to work with this person. I saw their film and it's incredible. And all, all it is for me is I would reach out and compliment them and say, I really love the film. And if there's ever an opportunity, I'd love to work with you and leave it at that. I would say like, it's all rooted back in film school uh, for me. Um, that's where all the foundation was laid and let me continue. Um, it's, it's a little different now because I started out work shooting on film and it took, you know, you needed the training in that, you needed to know it. So that's where film school helped a lot. Now with digital, a lot of people can just pick it up and start making amazing images. And there's some amazing talent out there that would have never been found if, if it was still film and film school, right? Um, my, the generation I came from was the generation of transition from film to digital. And, uh, so film, learning film and being focused on cinematography while I was in school helped carve me into this, into this, um, situation where I'm the cinematographer and there's people that rely on me. Um, but it might be a little bit diff different now with digital and and the, the amount of competition out there, uh, the amount of ability that people have. And it's a, but it's at the end of the day, it's all about the people you've met and the people you get to work with and the work you do together. Um, it, it, that's the most important thing. When it comes to starting a new project uh, with a director, you know, sometimes you're given a lookbook and that kind of tells you this is what the director's thinking and this is the vibe that we're going for and then you can kind of look at the content see if it applies well for you and hopefully that's the case and um and then you kind of just have to collaborate and get get in sync on the idea and the imagery that you're looking for so whether that's sharing references of films and watching films together um to, to photographs like I have a collection of like photography books and usually when it comes to a project if, especially if I don't know where to start I'll just flip through photography books and uh, and try to like just bookmark little uh, images along the way scan them send them to the director hey I was like this feeling of this image is right the colors in this image the composition in this image is not everything in one image. It's all these little pieces of each reference you get that you combine to make the look of the film. And then, and then from there, you start looking at the technical aspect. You, you start looking at, well, what lenses do I want to shoot it on? What camera body do I want to shoot it on? Uh, what types of lights do I want to bring out? Um, and, and I think what I've learned over the years is that you need to spend time at the rental house carve out some time and play with different filtration, play with different lenses, different camera body combinations, depending if you can afford, like you can have that option. I know that not everyone has options of changing out all these things, but it, and then if you can get it looking the way you want it on the camera with filtration, lenses, camera body, the LUT, um, all those things combined, then right out, right out of the gate when you're on set and you're framing it up, 
even the director are like, yeah, it's looking right. You know, it feels right. <laughs> so it's a, it's a long process. The lighting for a scene, I usually, it starts with the location scouting and um, kind of seeing what the environments and the sets or locations that you're dealing with, what they're going to look like, what the production designer is going to do to it. Uh, you know, is the production designer going to change the whole interior and make it a certain color palette? And what's the color palette the two of you are working on? And then so you you have to be able to picture the environments you're working in first. And then from there, you look at the the windows. Should you light through the windows? Like how, what what's the vibe you're looking for? What's the kind of contrast and the style of lighting you're looking for? And how can you achieve it in that environment? And then, yeah, it's like small diagrams of maybe I'm thinking about putting, you know, lights coming in from the windows, you know, 18Ks or something like that. Or maybe I, I don't want to do that at all. I want the, the windows to blow out completely and I'll just diffuse them and, uh, and I'll use uh, smaller lights on the inside and adapt it that, that way. So I don't know, it's, you start that, you start with, I always start with what's the actual place it's gonna look like. And then I kind of have an idea of an approach that suits the style of the film. And then it's about the tech scout and working it out with your gaffer. Uh, this is what I'm thinking. And then he or she can be like, yeah, we could do it with way less lights, James, <laughs> or something like that. And working out a solution for the schedule and how to execute it within the time you have is usually the other issue. And then that defines the lighting approach in another way. I think it's pretty natural for a cinematographer to get stuck. Um, I. I've definitely felt that way before, um, but usually stuck for me is the is the feeling of the highs and lows of cinematography, and there's a lot. Um, it's so great to be on set working on a project for a few months, or and and just you know working on your craft and and just enjoying it and making great images. But then when it's all wrapped up and done, all those people you work with are gone right and you kind of start feeling stuck because you're waiting for the next project right so even when you have something great and you've had done something it still feels like you can get stuck or um for for me like i've had films go to like a film go to can and that's like this crazy high and and you, i never thought it would be there and then you know so you're on this high and then all of a sudden you know you think everything's going to change, but then all of a sudden you're back to normal, back back at the baseline, and you feel stuck. I usually use the time of like feeling stuck as a cinematographer to kind of recuperate, re-energize, and seek new inspiration uh, to, to make me better at my job so that the next project I'm on, I, I can do an even better job than I did before and I'm bringing new ideas to the table and new ideas that I'm excited about. So in, in some ways, the, the time of being stuck for me is the time to just be inspired, figure out a way to get inspired and want to do something different. And like, for example, one year I, I went to Camry Maj, which is a cinematography film festival in Poland. Uh, just by myself because I felt so stuck and I felt like I wasn't getting anywhere and I went I went away to this kind of awesome festival where it's just all about cinematography you're watching movies seeing beautiful imagery different techniques looking at different equipment and talking to all these people and, and it really inspired me to be like okay I, I have to do better, I need to do more. And, 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 you know, collecting more images, photography, stuff that inspires you, that's what you should do when you're feeling stuck. Um, so that when you do get the next gig, you're, you're ready for it, you're excited, and you got ideas. I think if I were to talk to my younger self, I, and, uh, you know, when I'm starting out as a cinematographer, and what I would say now, to the younger version of myself, I would say, you know, just come, come at every project with excitement and inspiration. And once again, you know, don't get down on yourself for the lack of budget and the lack of being able to 
execute something the way you envision it perfectly and just focus on telling a story that's what we're here for that's um it's not all about the technical it's about um telling a good story that that connects with people and um it's not always about the lighting it's not always about that camera move you couldn't have it's as long as you're telling a good story and connecting with an audience that goes a long long way and you being a part of that as a cinematographer can only help you i find well, at least in my career you know patience on set patience of like being able to work out the problem and not freak out and and get panicked uh that's key patience in your career because i know that you know there's moments where i watch something and i go i can do that how come i can't get there yet you know an on a movie that i'm watching i'm like i could i could shoot this i think i could and, but you're just not there yet in your career and it's hard and and you, it, but it's that fire that's burning inside you that keeps your career going uh but patience is also extremely important in this industry because there's a lot of factors that determine uh what kind of job you're going to get uh what how you're going to execute on set and all these things and you just have to be patient and work through and a lot of the job is problem solving and and finding the best way to solve the problem and make it look the way you want to and uh and just being able to be patient for your time to come is is a huge challenge and it's important to have that patience. Mm-hmm.